By the end of this video, I will have Platinum on every Ratchet & Clank game that released on the PS2. That includes the first Ratchet & Clank, Ratchet & Clank 2 Going Commando, Ratchet & Clank 3 Up Your Arsenal, and Ratchet Deadlocked. And to kick off today's video, we are starting with Ratchet & Clank 1. Oh, this music is so nostalgic. Oh my god. The only, game, the only thing I don't like about Ratchet & Clank 1 is you can't strafe. The two heroes, Ratchet & Clank, meet each other for the first time here. They team up and try to defeat the evil Chairman Drek, who intends to destroy existing planets to help create his new super planet. Planet. And one of the planets he plans to destroy is Ratchet's home planet. And while I was on my journey, I picked up plenty of new weapons and gadgets, fought huge aliens, controlled turrets to shoot down huge ships, did hoverboard races, and even played as a giant clank. There weren't that many story related trophies in this game, and you're going to see that's a common occurrence in all of these games that we play today. All the story trophies are pretty much obtaining gadgets and weapons, such as the Magna Boots and the Persuader, and also for obtaining a pretty useful weapon, the Suck Cannon. But really, the only story related trophy. I got throughout the game was for defeating Captain Clark. I was also able to collect enough bolts to purchase one of the nanotech upgrades. Bolts are the main currency of this game. They're basically like the studs from Lego games. But of course, the final boss in this game was Chairman Drek. And man, I didn't expect to rage in a Ratchet and Clank game. But let me say, Chairman Drek was by far the hardest thing that I had to do while doing any of these games. Not to mention the checkpoint placement in these games are absolutely brutal. Sometimes you basically have to go through three quarters of the level without dying, or you have to start the entire level back from the beginning. And this was also the case for Chairman Drek. You basically have to take off three quarters of Chairman Drek's health all without dying you barely get any health back if you do get hit so basically it's five hits and you're dead and if you don't beat him you have to start all the way back to three quarters of his health again and on the last phase of the boss fight it's not easy to hit him. You have multiple enemies coming your way, multiple projectiles you have to dodge. Also, while making sure to hit a button in the middle of the stage, or else you fail the boss fight. And oh yeah, also, like I said at the beginning of the video, you can't strafe in this game, which makes the combat extremely frustrating at times. Oh, no! I jumped. All right, how far back am I? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on just a second. Bro, this is like the start of the, are you kidding me? This game expects me to start from the second you start playing as Little Ratchet, go through the whole bo the whole entire boss battle, and survive the whole time with this jank ass combat, beat him, and still have enough ammo, and not get hit for that long. Yeah, man, this is gonna be fun. Then it keeps spawning these stupid things more. From freaking Goddard from jimmy neutron and then give me some more glow of doom ammo even though it's freaking a thousand goddamn bolts i don't care it's the end of the game we're gonna do the glitch anyway so it doesn't really matter no not really get away goddard i swear to god dude i swear to god i swear to god all right let's chill on this for a second just let the glow of doom take care of the enemies am i And then I like that's that is that is absolutely without a doubt the most horse shit checkpoint I have ever seen in a video game. That is so bull. Oh my god, this game. You're telling me that killed me right now, huh? I swung. I, I can't do this right now, dude. I can't do. I can't do this right now. I literally swung directly at him, and he still bit me and killed me. Pause. I need devastator ammo. This is the rest of my bolts, but I need it. Fourteen chest should do it. Okay. What? I'm gonna cry. Screw this game. Why was that so difficult? This is a ratchet and clank game. God, that combat was some cheeks, dude. Drek this. Nice. Finally, once I defeated Chairman Drek, you get an option at the end of the game to either start a new game with current weapons and bolts or time warp to before you defeated Chairman Drek. Time warp, do all skill points, get the one mil bolts and energy plus for gold guns. Okay. 
I'll time warp. Now it was time for the post game cleanup of this game, getting all the skill points and getting all the gold bolts. But before I do all of that, I have to focus on this trophy right here getting 1 million bolts. Now to do that on this game, you can either do one of two things. The first way is to play the game over and over and over and over again until you finally reach 1 million bolts. Or the second thing you can do is glitch to 1 million bolts, which any smart man would do. So that's what I ended up going with. To glitch to 1 million bolts in this game, there is a way to glitch through the map and get on the hoverboard race track in Rilgar. Now, once you get in the track, you just go to this one spot on the track where there are boxes laying on a platform above you and basically if you never look on this platform above you and you break them the boxes will infinitely respawn so the strategy was to stand in this one spot right here and hold down circle with the taunter so it just continuously goes and the boxes will break basically giving you infinite bolts and this strategy takes about eight to ten hours or so depending on how many bolts you already have i had like nothing so it took me a while all right ladies and gentlemen so this is the setup i have right now sorry if the my quality isn't as good i'm a little far away from it but this is my ps3 controller right here as you can see i have it wrapped with one of my girlfriend's hair ties and then holding down the circle button is a dime while i have the stick slightly being pulled by my iphone charger as you can see right there and the iphone charger is being held up by a water bottle so yeah a jank freaking contraption here but hey guess what it works as you guys can see right there it's working completely fine and uh yeah i'm gonna take a nap or actually, I'm not going to take a nap. I'm actually going to see Oppenheimer right now. And uh, I'm going to go see that. And then when I get home, I'm going to sleep. And then hopefully in the morning, uh, this will be good. So you think after all that in the morning, it would be good, right? Wrong. Somewhere in the middle of the night, my controller got moved. And the strategy wasn't going on for a good, I don't know how long. But when I woke up in the morning and checked, I was at 500k bolt. All right, so I got like nothing to do. So uh, I guess we're going outside and touch some grass because the thing is still rolling. I got messed up during the night. I don't, I literally don't know how. So yeah, I haven't touched grass in a while. So um, I guess I'm gonna go do that real quick. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the moment of truth. Touching some grass, there it is, live, right in front of you. Wow. All right, it's enough grass for the day, back inside. I let it run a little bit during the day and I got my million bolts and the trophy popped. Here it is right here. Finally, now that I had a million bolts, I was able to purchase the Rhino, which is the best weapon in the game. Let's buy the Rhino. We should get a trophy for this too. Hey, there we go. The Rhino. Nice. Hey, ultimate animal. I could also buy the rest of the guns in the shop that I didn't have, which also get me another trophy. I'm not sure if you have to get a new gun, but we're going to buy all the guns in the store too. The Walloper. The drone device and the tesla claw for buying all the gadget weapons and it does gadgeteer and my final nanotech upgrade here we go here's the last health upgrade this should be it unless there's one more after this there we go nano this the next step was to acquire all of the skill points in the game skill points appear in each ratchet and clank game in this video and i like to think of skill points as trophies before they were really a thing basically what they are is a list of tasks and challenges that you have to complete and most of the skill points in this game tie to also a trophy in the trophy list obviously trophies didn't exist back in the ps2 so this is what they built in the game to try to basically make a trophy system which i think is pretty cool but going back to the hoverboard race on rogar the first skill point that i decided to go for was to do a twisty mcmarks while you were doing the hoverboard race you could do certain tricks and one of those tricks is called the twisty mcmarks and how you did that is you had to hold one of the bumper buttons on the top of the controller and you had to hold each of them for one second each all in a row and you have to land the trick and you'll get the skill point all right maybe i maybe i did it for too long maybe i'm supposed to spin for longer all right, one, 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 one. There we go, Twisty McMarks, let's go. All right, that's done. Hey, Twisted Hoverboard. I'm not gonna show every single skill point because literally most of them, most skill points in the game were pretty much just going on a planet and destroying things, whether that would be street lights, uh, random vehicles in the air, random ships in the air, flying transports, breaking a random statue on a planet. I thought this skill point was pretty funny. You had to stand right between Al's RoboShack statue's legs. Just a random one from the amount of stuff you had to do in this game I thought was pretty funny. When you got halfway through the skill points though, you did get a trophy for obtaining 50 skill points and unlocking the sketchbook in addition to getting all the skill points i had to also get all of the gold bolts in the game gold bolts are pretty much the main collectible in this game there were 40 gold bolts spread throughout the entire game and of course once you collected the final one you got a trophy all right so here we go ladies and gentlemen this should be our final gold bolt that we need and we will have all 40 gold bolts collected 
Here we go right here. We should get a trophy. Okay, and gold bull acquired. We just gotta wait for it to save. It's always delayed on the PS3. So stupid. There we go. Bolt Commando. The nice gold trophy there. After I got all the gold bolts, it was now time to get my final skill point. Okay, so this should be the last skill point I need. Uh, there should be a boss inside here. I don't know if it respawns or not, though. Because I already beat it, and it does. Okay, so we have to defeat this boss only with our wrench. We cannot defeat her any other way. So I'm just going to try to weave her, do the little hop thing, and she bit me like a little... I only had uh, one nanotech going into this, so... Is probably gonna be a death, but yeah, even we have to, uh, oh, the nano check, oh, it doesn't matter, because we're just gonna get bit to death by a bunch of toads, or whatever they are. Right, so we kind of just got a weaver, like, just weave that, do a little, there we go, nicely done, jump to the side, start hitting her, there we go, that's the first phase down already, now we just gotta take out these things safely, which can be tough, because these, these things don't play around, like, look at them, dude, bundle them up together, train them around like Call of Duty zombies, and then go for him. There we go. So that's the strategy. You just got to bundle him up. All right, now let's go back to this. There we go. Getting some nice damage on her. Not bad. Not bad. Just the phases in between might be the tough part. Now, this is probably going to be the tough part. Okay, and that's it. All right, this should be good then. This should be good then. We should get the trophy or and the skill point. And then we also should get the trophy for it. And then we should also get a trophy for earning all the skill points. So there's the skill point right there. And then we just got to wait, girl trouble. So that's the trophy for the skill point. And, and skillful. There we go. All 30 skill points earned in the game. There we go. So now we need just one more trophy for this platinum. And yeah, we got it. The final trophy I needed for Ratchet and Clank 1 was to get all the gold weapons. Okay, so this is the last thing we need to do. Once you complete the game, you start a new game plus, And you can teleport to the gold weapons room at the literal beginning of the game. And as you can see, you get teleported to this cool freaking room full of all of the best guns in the game so we gotta buy all of these that was the point of collecting all the gold bolts so we collect the suck cannon gold so then once we buy all these that is the final trophy we need and we will then have our first platinum out of four games that we're doing in this video we can now move on to the games with uh, the, the, the better mechanics i'll say that's all I'll say about the, the combat from this game. The way better mechanics of the next three games. Because this game's... Mm, can't really strafe. The, the aiming is hard. The combat isn't great, so it made it frustrating at times. But it was still a really fun game. I think that's the last weapon we need. And it is... There we go. Ratchet King Midas and Gadget Master the Platinum for Ratchet and Clank 1. Now moving on to Ratchet and Clank 2, a game that I hold very near and dear to my heart. Ratchet and Clank 2 is probably the most nostalgic game out of the trilogy as it's probably the game I played the most when I was a kid. Starting off the game, the first thing to do obviously is to play the main story. While I go through the main story, there are three key things that I have to watch out for while I'm playing. There's one trophy for getting all weapons in the game and fully upgrading them. Fully upgrading them means upgrading them literally just one time. Step two is to fully max out my nanotech nanotech is indicated at the very top of the screen in the middle and you can see one little circle yeah there are about like 20 little circles so that whole thing is going to be filled up by the time i end this game and the third one is again get two million bolts which is way easier in this game than it was in ratchet and clank one there's only one single story related trophy in this game and that is for simply just defeating the main boss this game again follows ratchet and clank as they attempt to unravel a conspiracy in a new galaxy involving a mysterious pet project orchestrated by the shady company Megacorp. Like Ratchet and Clank 1, there are 30 more skill points you have to do in this game, as well as 40 platinum bolts you have to collect. Originally, I thought these skill points were missable, but what you can really do is just play up until the final boss fight, and then go back and complete every skill point on each planet. So what I did is I started out on the first planet getting some skill points. So we gotta buy this weapon, the chopper, and we take this gun, and we have to shoot these guys. Can we hop on this, or do we fall off? Okay, we do. We just shoot these dudes. I missed. I missed again. I keep missing. I keep missing. <laughs> That's going through him. I swear it is. There we go. There's one. Two. Three. Oh, we got another one on accident. There we go. There's a skill point. All right, cool. As well. There we go. Prehistoric Rampage. First trophy. Break all breakables inside Megacorp score or store on Planet Uzla. Oh, there. We got a skill point. Nice. It's over. Hey, there we go. More vandalism. All right, so that's done for this, right? After that, I land on the planet with hover bike races. Basically the same thing as hoverboards from the first game. And again, there is a trophy where we have to complete a hover bike race in under a certain amount of time. So here that is right here. All 
All right, let's see if that's it. Hey, 208, we should get the trophy now. Hey, there we go, Speed Demon. Nice, we got that over with, nice. So I didn't end up getting that many more trophies during the story. I ended up getting this trophy for getting 50k bolts and got this trophy for grinding the train rails without taking any damage on the planet Damasol. In this game, they introduced something called the Battle Arena where you can take on a number of challenges for rewards such as bolts and gadgets. There are two of them in the game and in this Battle Arena right here, I was able to earn myself two skill points as well as two trophies. We'll do this one with just our wrench. Luckily we have, oh God. Like, oh my god, my, my wrench is OP now. Oh. I didn't know you could fall off the map. All right, look, oh my god, this is, look at how easy this is. But the, with the max upgraded wrench, that was super easy. Oh my god. And there we go, wrench ninja, blade to blade. So that was easy. Now we defeat this without getting hit, and we get another skill point. Let's see how easy this is. Oh, okay, I got hit instantly. Can I just walk into it? Might not be fast enough. Oh, so close. Yes, there we go. Yay, we got a skill point. All right, that should give us the trophy. And I think that's it for the skill points on here. There we go. To be hit or not to be hit. Easy. There we go. I then went ahead and earned myself some more skill points. Again, this game followed the same trend of doing just random things like breaking something on a certain planet. This skill point I thought was pretty cool. So in this game, you actually could do boss battles as Giant Clank again. And in this specific boss battle, you just had to destroy every building and you end up getting a skill point and a trophy. So going back to the battle arena, there is something called the Impossible Challenge. In the Impossible Challenge, you have to go through lots of waves of enemies and bosses, specifically 60 rounds. And if you complete this, you are rewarded with lots and lots of bolts. But eventually I finished it, and in the normal playthrough, you were rewarded with 200,000 bolts and a trophy. Now moving on to the most annoying skill point and trophy in this game. What you had to do was kill all enemies with a wrench and without dying on Planet Joba. Seems easy enough, right? As you play through the game, you get stronger and stronger wrench upgrades, so it doesn't seem that bad, right? I got a lot of nanotech, wrong. Sometimes I would miss certain enemies, sometimes I would die, sometimes the challenge just didn't count at all. And to restart the challenge, you couldn't just simply reload a save or go on to another planet and come back. I would have to shut off my PS3 or it wouldn't count. I was doing that for a while, until then, eventually, I was easily able to do this, like, consistently. I did it, like, three times in a row just to test it out. I don't know, but I ended up doing it and i got the trophy and the skill point after that i did a couple more random skill points like turning 16 squirrels in the sheep protecting robot tourists from squirrels another trophy where i had to grind on a power cable without taking damage shooting down random ships in the air protecting random civilians in a bank from robots but then here comes two kind of grindy skill points for these two skill points you had to go on a certain planet and mine 100 crystals in each of these planets and all for this one cracked out of his mind magic Magician looking dude. The first one was in a desert. This one wasn't that bad because the enemies were pretty weak and my weapons were starting to get really strong at that point. The crystals were also indicated on the map, so they weren't that hard to find. But once you do collect all of the crystals, you can go back to the guy and he rewards you with lots and lots of bolts. And from getting all of those bolts, I was able to then get the collect 1 million bolts trophy as well. The second area where we had to mine on the crystals though, absolute torture. These areas were filled with these yetis and these hydras that did so much damage to you and they were super, super super hard to kill and you simply could just not escape these yetis they were faster than you they were stronger than you but it wasn't that bad because i got the trophy and i was also rewarded with a lot more bolts my next task was to max out my ship to do this you needed to collect a different currency called rarentanium which you can only get by doing these spaceship missions inside of this game now there was a tactic that i used to get rarentanium super super fast i would basically do the first ship mission of the game and i had the ship upgrade that i bought which was the nuke which cost 60 rarentanium so i just saved up until i got that and once you load into this mission if you shot the nuke straight away you would take out every enemy in the first wave instantly and you would get a bunch of rarentanium each time so that made it super super easy to get all the rarentanium i needed i think you needed 290 rarentanium in total to buy all the upgrades it took me probably less than 20 minutes to get enough rarentanium that I needed to fully upgrade my ship. All right, so I now have 150 rarentanium. That should be plenty of rarentanium I need if not, I can just go back and grind more. But basically, we have to purchase all of these. So that purchase, 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 purchase. And we don't have quite enough. So we need 85 more, which 
I have 27 already, and that freaking strategy that I showed you guys is super quick. All right, now I should have definitely played. That's so OP. I literally grinded for under five minutes, and now I have 124 already. Buy that, buy that. I'm not sure if we have to buy these as well. I guess, oh wait, I don't think we do. Oh, we got a nice ride. There we go. We got the skill point and we also got the trophy. My next goal was another returning thing from Ratchet and Clank 1. Obtaining all 40 of the platinum bolts. You're in platinum bolts in a couple ways in this game. It isn't just going and finding them like it was on Ratchet and Clank 1. The first way was just the normal way, but the second way was actually doing the ship missions. And there is a race on each section that you can do the ship missions. And if you do that race without missing a single ring, you also get a platinum bolt for doing that. Last platinum bolt is up here we just have to get out this gadget right here the tractor beam here we go collect the platinum bolts that is all 40 right there and we should get the trophy second there we go platinum power so now i was all done i got most of the skill points i can get by playing the game normally as well as all the platinum bolts so it was now time to defeat the final boss and go into challenge mode that's the end of the game mutation complete in challenge mode i had a couple tasks i had to finish out getting two million bolts Oh, I got bolts to trade. Nice. We got 2 million bolts. I had to buy the final weapons in the game, the Zodiac and the Rhino. These enemies want to play around. All right, cool. Rhino time. How's that? And that should get us a trophy as well. There we go. Now it's time. Yeah, it is time for these freaking enemies because they keep killing me. Max out the rest of my nanotech and buy the best armor in the game, the Carbonox armor. I mean, I should have a million bolts now. I'm well over a million bolts. It means I can go over here and buy the Carbonox armor, which will give me another trophy. And that will also be... Look at that. That looks sick, man. Look at that. And there we go. Yay, Carbon. The Zodiac costed 1.5 million bolts. And like I said, doing the impossible challenge will help me on my challenge run. Well, it did. Doing the impossible challenge in challenge mode mode gets you two million bolts just like that which gave me plenty of bolts to go ahead and purchase the zodiac later on i also was able to max out my nanotech you can only go so far by leveling it up yourself the rest of the nanotech you have to collect these canisters and this was the last one right here and that got me the trophy okay so as you can see here i have every weapon that i could possibly upgrade fully upgraded all you have to do is get it to the orange color from my understanding you can't see the weapon behind my face cam but trust me it's all orange the only thing I need to do, as you can see, I have 2.7 million bolts in the bank. All I need to do now to get that trophy is buy the Zodiac. So I'm going to get one weapon, one trophy for buying the Zodiac, one trophy for getting all the weapons, and one trophy for getting all the skill points. So let's buy the Zodiac. I got a skill point. That's my last skill point. Here we go. Here comes the trophy barrage. BFG, that's for the Zodiac. And next up, destruction time. That's for all of the weapons. And I should get one more for all 30 skill points. There we go. Super skilled. Now we have one more trophy in the game left. The only thing I should have left is getting into the Insomniac Museum. But as you can see, if I you're supposed to unlock a shortcut, it says, if you get all 40 bolts. But as you can see, I don't have it. And then I read that you have to get all the skill points. But now I have all the skill points and I still don't have it. So my last resort here, if I don't unlock the uh, the shortcut, I'm just going to have to glitch into it. So the last resort I saw here is to actually go ahead and buy all of these upgrades with all of the bolts. So I'm just going to do that real quick. So there you go. I now purchased every single attachment that I could possibly have. There we go. Insomniac Museum. Finally, the upgrade went through or the shortcut appeared so i go into this and i should get a trophy as soon as i enter it and the platinum here we go we're in the insomniac museum we just gotta wait a minute and the trophy should pop there we go museum tour and he went commando the platinum trophy on ratchet and clank 2 now moving on to my favorite game ratchet and clank 3 you heard me right there we're now moving on to ratchet and clank 3 up your arsenal my personal favorite ratchet and clank game of all time this game introduces the most prestigious antagonist in all of ratchet and clank dr nefarious and it's ratchet and clank's job to defeat him and stop him from turning all organic life into robots step one of course is to play through the main story and again just like ratchet and clank 2 we have to upgrade all of our weapons to the max level and weapons don't just upgrade to one level in this game there are five levels in the normal game and in challenge mode there are three additional levels we also have to get once we enter that there are only two story related trophies in this game one for defeating dr nefarious and another one for defeating the final boss after dr nefarious but during the main story i did end up earning a couple of skill points both of these skill points were on a planet called annihilation nation which is a whole planet dedicated to arena based challenges the challenges on this planet consist of normal arena 
challenges where you go into an arena and defeat a bunch of enemies but there are other challenges called gauntlet challenges which are essentially just obstacle courses that you have to go through i got one skill point and trophy for completing any gauntlet challenge without taking any damage sly cooper's up oh. I just got a trophy, flee flawlessly. In addition to that, there are challenges on certain planets called battle missions. In these missions, you go out and take on a bunch of enemies in a field. You can either do this on foot or in a hover ship, or you can even control a turret and defend an area. Once you complete every battle mission that the game has to offer, you then get a trophy. But before I defeated the final boss, it was time for step two. Again, getting all of the 30 skill points and collecting all 40 of the titanium bolts. I think the skill points in this game were the most fun and had the most variety out of any game that we played so far now i mentioned before that i thought skill points were pretty much their trophy system from back in the day well this game actually features a whole trophy room in this game well every time you complete a certain challenge you get a trophy in that room there are also trophies that you can find all around the planets we get one trophy for collecting both the ratchet trophy and the clank trophy come around here and it should be right there hey there we go ratchet trophy so not only get us a trophy in the game but it's gonna get us a trophy and for the platinum list i don't i don't know what the hell i was going with there we just gotta wait a second there we go mini ratchet oh okay it's right here all right there's the clank trophy let's see it secret, i don't know why i'm doing that secret agent clank there we go on the first planet of the game florana there is a path that you can take called the path of death and what we had to do was traverse this entire path without taking any damage all right path of death here we go without dying okay hold on hold on, hold on without taking hit okay hold on i didn't have a weapon now hold on hold on, hold on. taking zero hits oh. uh, okay okay i get it game i get it i got hit good okay <gasps> there we go we're good oh my god Oh my god, that was close. Or it probably wasn't even that close, but... <laughs> no! I knew how that was gonna happen, bro. Part's a little scary, too, even though I haven't gotten hit by it. This guy just... It just suicides. Let's go this way. There we go. Oof. No! Okay, okay. Yay, there we go. We got the skill point. Oh, thank god. And the trophy... Stay squeaky clean. Boom. We were also tasked with hitting a monkey with my wrench. Poor monkey. Come here. No, no. Come here. Come here. Come here. Here. I am not done with you. Yo, how do you get this dude? This dude's fast as hell. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. I'll cut him off right here. Ready? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Get him. Yes, I got him. Get down. He deserves to live. No, he deserves to get hit by my ranch because I need the trophy. Monkeying around. Let's go. Now going back to Annihilation Nation. In Ratchet and Clank 2, there was something called the Impossible Challenge. This is basically the same thing, but it's called the Quarktastic Battle. And instead of there being 60 rounds, there is now 100 rounds. But again, if you defeat this, you are rewarded heavily with bolts. It's really just round 100. Just take it. There we go. 200k bolts. <laughs> Quark testing win. There we go. I also had to defeat the boss Scorpio while only using my wrench. I defeat him with just a wrench. This should be pretty easy because my wrench is maxed out now. We just do a bunch of hyper strikes. I'm pretty sure we can kill him fast. Okay, maybe never, never mind. Maybe not. Maybe he's just not gonna let me hit him. Push through. You got 98 health. You can just tank it. He's almost done. Oh, this is easy. This is easy. Give me that skill point. Let's go. And there we go, bash the bug. After that, it was time for a bunch of more random skill points. We had to destroy a snowman again. Literally just destroy a blimp. In the last game, you have to convert squirrels into sheep. In this game, you have to convert blood flies into ducks. Also returning from Ratchet and Clank 2 is another crystal skill point. Yay, because I love that so much. You have to collect all 101 sewer crystals on Aquatos. Yeah, this was pretty annoying. But again, you got it rewarded with lots and lots of bolts. So I didn't really mind it that much. Now moving on to a new addition into Ratchet and Clank 3, the Quark Comics. Quark Comics are little platforming levels that you can play as Captain Quark. There are five of them with 100 tokens each. What you had to do for a trophy was get 100% on all of these video game comics. That means getting all 100 tokens and the health upgrade inside of all five levels. Also, you get a skill point for speed running each level. Yay more speed runs it was now time to get my 30th and final skill point which was for purchasing the best armor in the game all right here we go so once we hop into the armor vendor this will give us the last armor we could buy as you can see the infernox armor 1 million bolts let's spend it that'll give me lots of protection and also the final skill point look at that that looks sick right there you got the skill master trophy 
And we should get the trophy in, in, the, in PlayStation. There we go. Skill Master. Now it was time for all 40 titanium bolts. In this game, you can earn titanium bolts in a couple different ways. The first way is to just find them normally hiding. The second way is in the VR training arena. After you complete every challenge, you then get a platinum bolt in there. You also get a titanium bolt by getting all 100 of the tokens in each Quark comic. There are bolts that you can collect in the gauntlet challenges, as well as there are bolts hidden in the battle missions. But of course, once I got all 40 titanium bolts, I got a trophy. The last bolt we have to collect in any Ratchet and Clank game, at least in this video. Uh, I, I believe there's no bolts in Ratchet Deadlock, so here we go. The Titanium Collector Trophy didn't even give me an animation. That's kind of anticlimactic, huh? And we should get the trophy thorough. There we go, man. No more freaking collectibles. Let's go. All right, now that I got all 40 titanium bolts, all 30 skill points, and all my weapons are up to level five. In normal story mode, you can only get your nanotech up to level 100. And I had that done. So now it was time to face the final two bosses. You got one trophy for defeating the first phase or the first final boss, as I like to call it, Dr. Nefarious. And then the second final boss was this huge robot called the Bio Obliterator. And you also got a trophy for defeating him. Now, it was time to enter into challenge mode probably my favorite part of every ratchet and clank my task in challenge mode went like getting the rhino maxing out my nanotech collecting the rest of my 10 million bolts and maxing out every weapon to the omega weapon all right so we're about to max out my nanotech here only one more shot and there we go we get the nano finder trophy 200 out of 200 nanotech and it should give us the trophy nano finder getting 10 million bolts really wasn't that bad in challenge mode there is a multiplier that you get where every time you get a kill without getting hit the multiplier goes up and it goes up to 20 and with the rhino that was super easy as i would never really get hit at all so it was super easy for me to get 10 million bolts and the trophy my final trophy for ratchet and clank 3 was to max out all of the omega weapons my strategy actually for leveling up these weapons really quickly we're just getting to the final planet of the game and literally just going through and destroying these enemies right here for some reason they gave you a ridiculous amount of xp on each weapon in the game it didn't take me that long to grind each weapon maybe like a half hour 45 minutes to get every single omega weapon in the game at least the ones i hadn't upgraded already from just playing through the story normally but that was like pretty much every weapon you just get a crazy amount of xp i couldn't believe the amount of xp you got but here is me getting my final weapon and my final trophy okay so as long as i don't have to upgrade these weapons right here the going commando weapons i should have then every omega weapon which will get me my last trophy and obviously the platinum so i should just need to do this one more time i've been just doing this strategy literally the whole time to level up each weapon i did this for ranking up every weapon to level five and then i've easily done it to get every omega weapon so there's that there it is omega man and hero of the galaxy that is the ratchet and clank trilogy done but we have one more game to go now it's time to move on to the final game of this video ratchet deadlocked ratchet deadlocked is a very different game compared to the other three ratchet and clank games in this game you're playing only as ratchet clank is still in the story but he is not really the main focus like he is in the other games this game pretty much removes all of the platforming and the gadget stuff from the other three ratchet and clanks and only focuses mainly on combat the game is locked on the strafe camera if you have a gun out and all of the missions in this game pretty much feel like the battle missions from ratchet and clank 3 what you do on each planet is basically just challenges there really isn't a story to follow on each planet you just go and basically do a battle mission once you complete all the missions you then move on to the next planet that's pretty much all this game is but this game was still weirdly kind of fun the combat in this game felt really really good just being able to destroy everything in your path on each planet felt really really fun it kind of felt like an arcade type game but also here's the funny thing about this game zero story related trophies also no bolts that you have to collect in this game no gold platinum or titanium bolts at all during playing the main story i had to focus on upgrading every weapon to level 10 and also just increasing my nanotech to level 50 that's not even the max it can go it goes up to 99 and then above in challenge mode this game was kind of weird to me with the trophies i don't i don't really know it seems like you pretty much just half-ass the game and you get a platinum trophy and the last thing i had to do was earn 200,000 dread points you get dread points every time you complete a mission in this game and the harder the challenge, the more dread points you get. Again, 200,000 dread points isn't even the most you have to get in the game. To get in the top of this little leaderboard right here, most of the trophies in this game were linked to skill points though, which brings me to the amount of skill points that are in this game. The first three, there are 30. In this game, there is 165 skill points that you have to do. There are 15 skill points on each planet and there are 11 planets total. So again, the strategy was just playing through the main story until I get to the final boss, then going back and doing every 
skill point. I ended up getting the Nanotastic Trophy, which was for increasing your Nanotech to level 50. Halfway through the game, it was super easy to max out Nanotech in this game, as well as getting 200,000 Dread Points. But now it was time to get all the skill points. Most of the skill points in this game were pretty repetitive, like even more repetitive than the first three games. Like kill 30 enemies with this weapon, kill 30 enemies with this weapon while this mod was attached, kill this amount of enemies without getting hit, kill five enemies in a row with this weapon. Like most of them were pretty repetitive. So I'm only going to show the skill points that had a trophy attached to them. All right now for everyone's favorite thing, skill points. What we have to do is defeat five of these enemies with a hammer with my wrench. Um, please game. I, I hope that counted. I have the max wrench upgrade and it's still taking forever. I think this should be number... Okay, that should be number three. This works. It should be four and five. I don't... I'm not sure though because I... There we go. Low blow. There is the skill point. And there's the trophy. Gut wrencher. Let's go. For the next challenge, we have to complete this challenge right here in under one minute and 30 seconds. So it says the best way to do this is just completely ignore all the enemies and just go right after the balloons. So number four. I'm taking a lot of damage. Oh, I'm taking a lot of damage. This should be it for that one. There we go. Last one. Last one. Just go, 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 go. Okay. This should be it. Light speed. There we go. Nice. That wasn't too hard. I hated that mission when I first did it. Land stalker talking. Literally, all we have to do for this is just kill these flying things in the air. Just lock on all of them. All my missiles will kill them. Easy, just like that. We have to do that. We have to kill 30 of them. And then we also get the skill point and trophy. And there it is already schooled. And we should also get that nice trophy. There we go. Death from above. Now we have to just complete a challenge without getting hit. This one should be pretty easy. All you do is just ride around on this bike and destroy these 12 robots. And all I have to do is just not get hit by the barrel because they don't shoot at you. Those barrels right there that I'm passing, those are explosive barrels that hurt me. So all I got to do is not run into them and I should be golden. Right, last one. And we're close. Come on. Stop running from me. There we go. We should have got that skill point. And there we go. Spotless. Okay. It didn't tell me I got the skill point, but I got the trophy. So there we go. So this one's a little weird. I have to ride this vehicle. It's called the Puma over to an area with a lot of enemies. I don't know how I'm supposed to do the challenge when you have 3,000 enemies shooting at me at once. And I can't do anything to avoid them because they all have aimbot. But okay, game. Thank you. I'm going to die from this freaking guy and my puma blew up <laughs> unbelievable thank you speed bumps finally dude screw this challenge and there's the trophy cat scratch fever while getting the skill point though i ended up getting a trophy for upgrading three weapons to level 10 Try me, I dare you. I have, oh, I think that's for getting three weapons to uh, level 10. That's what that's for. Well, that's not the trophy I was going for. The trophy I was going for uh, just didn't work. This one, I need to beat Ace here without taking a hit. So far, I think I'm, okay, I forgot he heals, which is stupid. And there it goes. And I'm just a, mm, ran right into it, Brandon. Good job. That was such good coordination you had right there. It's this fate. I run into it every time. I did it three times in a row, Brandon. Maybe you'll learn. You're such a dumbass this time. Boom. Ace in the hole. Let's go. I don't need no harbinger. I don't need no harbinger. I'm like that. Ace gets clubbed. Let's go, baby. Now I need to beat the eviscerator using only my wrench. Realistically, this shouldn't be too bad. I have my wrench maxed out. Or if he's just not going to take any damage. Never mind. The wrench literally does nothing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh have you fight a boss where my wrench quite literally does nothing. I guess the guy that I'm looking at again tells me the wrong thing. I just have to beat him with the flail, which is absolutely easy. I have the flail maxed out, and it's like the most overpowered weapon in the game for me. I don't know why. Guy tells me with the wrench, I look it up on another website, it just tells me with the flail. Where with the flail, I could just do that the whole time. It's that easy. Easy mode. Easy mode with the flail. Thanks. Thanks, guy, for telling me it's with the wrench. When it clearly wasn't. Bugging out. There's a trophy. I'm bugging out right now because this guy. And skill points are blooming. We got 60 skill points already. Nice. This was the final skill point that I was able to get on my first playthrough. For this skill point, all I needed to do was just find five treasure crates hidden around this level. Oh, right here. This should be the trophy. Boom. Show me the money. That's every skill point that we can get right now. And we should get the trophy as well. 
Show me the money. Boom. The final three skill points I can only complete on Exterminator difficulty, which was a difficulty I can only unlock by doing challenge mode. So I decided to finish the game and head into challenge mode. In challenge mode, there were four things I needed to clean up. The first one was getting the rest of my four million bolts. Getting bolts in this game is you can literally do it with your eyes closed. It's so easy. Purchasing the Harbinger weapon, which is the rhino of this game, getting the rest of my weapons to level 10, and getting the final skill points that I need. In challenge mode, you obviously get a multiplier on your bolts for going a long time without getting getting hit and on this game it was especially easy to do that so i was easily able to get the four million bolts so now it was time to purchase the harbinger here we go we're gonna get our first trophy live on stream already the harbinger two million bolts i literally did something yesterday i got like 18 million bolts and like literally a half like it was like 10 minutes it was crazy so we buy this this is this game's version of the rhino we got that and we should get the trophy for it as well aiming is overrated boom and show you my strategy on how to get a ton of bolts as well as upgrade all my weapons really really easily so literally all i did to grind levels and bolts was this challenge right here that's already level two off of two shots <laughs> this is all i did literally you throw down four turrets on the map they just destroy everything with the shock mod and it gets you a absolute insane amount of bolts i mean just look out look how fast it's going up there we go supernova now, it should be the trophy. I'm not sh It should be. The there we go. Perfect. So, of course, the final thing I needed to do was get the rest of the skill points. There was only one more skill point I needed on Exterminator, so I changed the difficulty. And, of course, I got my final trophy and my platinum. Here we go. One more. One more. Hard luck. There we go. That's all the missions for Toval. Give it to me. Side questing. PS3. Mad skills. And hero of the shadow sector all four games all four ratchet and clank ps2 games fully platinumed let's go what an amazing four games and what a journey this video has been i'm genuinely going to miss these games this is the most fun i probably had while getting platinum trophies ever thank you guys so much for watching if you guys want to see when i platinum ratchet and clank 2016 click on this video right here